AWARE homework, import MBS743. This can be done at home or guided. This is for teachers. If you're doing it guided, have the kids run the, read the first steps out and then run it a couple of times just so that they can see um, what's going on. So read what it says here. Do not despair, for you are on the path to enlightenment. Completed 0 of 20. And then keep on going. Failed, sub numbers do not need quotes. I wanted 42, but you gave me, you need to fill in the blank. Now what we usually do if we're doing this in class is we do the first three together. So we remind the kids that they should only be removing the underscore, and then um, we tell them that they're going to put in numbers or letters. So the, the first ones are pretty easy, and it just gets them along, kind of kind of going. But they are, teach, they are learning basic concepts, like no, uh, numbers do not need quotes and uh, that they put in a number here for the default width. Now technically they could put in a get pen width and it would work, but we really would much rather have numbers or letters. That's what we're trying to uh, work with. Now it's important when you get to number um, the sub here, number 16, read out the sub name. Sub strings need quotes. That you um, say that a word with quotes around it is a string. It means the computer understands. And what I normally do when I demonstrate this is I do it with um, a lowercase letter so that they can see what happens if you get a guess that isn't quite right. So what does it say under the failed part here? I wanted capital G green, but you gave me normal green. Yep, so we need to have a capital letter here. And at this point, and then we'll run it, and you know, again, encourage kids to run it every time. At this point, we, we generally turn the pairs loose and they complete this in about 15 minutes or so, all the pairs. Now, um, these get progressively much harder, so we're going to run through them here. The next one, strings can include spaces. Um, what's going on here is we're actually you know, showing that strings can include spaces. So I'm just going to copy and paste this for the, for the purposes of time, which is totally fine. And then we'll, we'll go on there. So we've taught them a couple concepts about that. And the next thing is the color. So uh, the default color for the tortoise. Now, if they forget and they just type in you know, black, uh, then they're going to actually get an error which they might get a little bit stuck, but you'll have to remind them, is this a word or is this a number? And if it's a word, how do you make it um, known as a word to the computer? And you'll put the quotes around it for that. So then we'll rerun it and we'll see if that one is correct. And you can see this reminds them that it's not correct. Why is it not correct? Because you need to capitalize the B in black. Yep, and so we've, we've taught this concept about um, case sensitivity and space sensitivity for strings in this koan. Again, be very supportive of um, making sure that they are running it each time. Now, if they get in a place where they change something other than the underscore, they can uh, mess up the homework so that it won't even run. So uh, hopefully they've already learned the discipline of undoing but um, this is the first number here on the changing the pen width to five where they do not change the, the uh, check answer section. So remind them that they change only the underscore by removing it and they put in only numbers or letters. So what do I put in here to complete this? Five. Five, it's easy, huh? Change the pen width to five. I'm moving along to enlightenment. And which number am I on now? Sub, change the pen color to green or Wait. six over 20. Yep, so I have, uh, I've done six, I have 14 to go. So I need to change the pen color to green, so I'm going to be a lazy programmer, and I'm going to copy and paste, and there we go, and run it. And that's looking good, and now I am on moving the tortoise a thousand pixels. Now this one will confuse kids sometimes because we've got a little bit longer sub going on here. We've got this get Y. So, um, Notice the hint. Read the hint out. Hint. Make sure you read the name of this method. Okay, now if you don't know the answer, or the kids don't know the answer, I always tell them to put in a letter or a number and I say, which do you think it is? Now usually they understand that it's a number here and I say, well, what's the simplest number? Zero. So try zero and see what it says. And then you run it and you say, okay, is that right? No, I wanted negative 400, but you gave me negative 300. So what do you think this should be? 100. 100, yeah, let's try that. Now sometimes you'll actually see the realization, you'll see the light bulb go on, ah, when they, when, after they fiddle around with it a little bit, and that's the point of this. They can run it as many times as they want. Now this one's pretty straightforward. The method name is what? The tortoise turns 21. So what are we going to put in here on line 46? 21. 21, that's pretty easy. Okay. So we move along here, and now we're up to uh, number 9. We're almost halfway done already. 
So now we want to uh, follow this method name, and let's read that name out for me. The tortoise turns 15 twice. Okay, so that's 15 and 15. And again, sometimes they'll be a little bit lazy and they won't put in the second 15, but they'll be caught when they run it. So now we are halfway there, and the sub we're on is... How fast the tortoise can go. All right, so this one, we have a hint to click on the set speed and see the documentation. Kids will probably remember from the square, though. What's, what's the number to make it go fast? Ten. Ten. Yeah, it's all good. All right, so we are over halfway there. So now we're up to the variable section. So uh, this we used when we were talking about the number of sides in the square. So we've got number of toes, so this is pretty straightforward. We want to fill in this blank with how many? Ten. Ten. Okay. Looking good. All right, so now we're getting into the more um, complex things. So something equals age, and age equals what here? Three plus four. Which is? Seven. Seven. Now, some of the kids might actually do this. They might actually put three plus four, and let's see what happens here. That works. Now, more than one right answer is permitted here. We can actually put the seven in. That'll work, too. We really are going for simple as possible but the answers check for equivalency. So um, just something for you to be aware of. Now this next one trips a lot of kids up. What's the name of the sub here? Combining text. Yeah, so um, when they're stuck, you want to start with, well, is it letters or numbers? And so what a lot of them will do is, again, just get the idea of copying and pasting. And let's see if that works. That's always permitted. And it actually does. Another way to solve this would be if they had the concept that this was a space. So it works actually either way. So now we're up to this combining text and numbers. So again, if they picked up copy and paste on the previous one, they might be cognizant of copying and pasting here. So that's a very that's a very good thing to try out, and it's something that we want to teach, actually, especially in the first, first homework. Let's see if that one worked. Yeah, that one looked like it worked. Now, sometimes kids will also do it this way. Let's see if that works. Think it's going to work? Yes. All right, let's see. So more than one way to get the right answer, and that's totally fine. Now we get into the last section. This is definitely the most difficult section. We get kids doing all kinds of weird things here, especially if they're frustrated and they're maybe not um, finishing as fast as everybody else. If you've got some fast kids that are already done, what you want to do is get them started on a little uh, small recipe, like the spiral recipe or the four square recipe. Just have them started on their own so that the rest of the kids can finish the homework. So remind the kids that they can only change the underscore here. So what's the name of the sub? Combining text in a loop. Okay, so we start with a letter A, and then we have this loop 1 to 3, and sound equals sound plus H. Now, we have no idea what this answer is, so um, we can start with letters or numbers. So let's just start with a letter and remind people to make it a letter and see what, what it tells us. So it says, I wanted A, uh, but you gave me A. So what do I have to do to fix this? You tell me. Put another three H's inside of the quotation marks. Yeah, I do. Because this is a loop with three. Again, very, very complicated concept. Takes the kids a minute to get this one, but very satisfying when they do. Now moving to the next one. On line 91, what's the name of that method? For loops end at the end. Four loops end at the end. Okay, and we're looking for one, two, three, four, five. Now, what you want to do as a proctor if kids are stuck, they say, you know, you're going to fill in this with either a number or a letter. Say, look at previous examples, and, you know, maybe they can look at this one and see that this has a number. Because if they change something else or they put in a word here or something, then you make it into an endless loop, and, and then you'll have to kind of undo to get back. So if they have no idea which number to put in, you can start actually with one. That's a good number to put in. See if that works. It says, I wanted one, two, three, four, five, but you gave me one. 
So what number should that be? Not one, but five. Five. Yeah, because we want a loop there. So let's see if that worked. Looking good. So now this next one is a really fun one. So read that out. For, four loops can start anywhere. The answer is because for i equals something to nine, answer equals answer plus i. And here's the question. Read the question out. Why is seven the most feared number? We're trying to get what answer? Because seven, eight, nine. Oh, ho, ho. so what should we do with this underscore? Is it going to be a letter or a number? I have this weird suspicion it could be a number. All right, and what number should we try? Seven. Let's try seven. So we start at seven, and then we go on. So let's go ahead and go on, and now we're on the next one. So read that one out. Four loops can skip. We got numbers for i equals one, two, five. We have this new weird number here, this new uh, notation here. Now what we tell the kids is they can click on the documentation, but you can't really see anything there. If they click on the word step, they will actually see something. So we're actually trying to get the kids to click on the documentation because they haven't seen step before. So what's happening here is they want one, three, five. That's the output. So they're probably not going to get this from first trying. You want to get them to start with a number. So again, maybe they'll start with one, and let's see what, what happens here. And so I wanted one, three, five, but you gave me one, two, three, four. So then tell them maybe be, use a bigger number like 10 and see what happens. I wanted one, three, five, but you gave me one. So just keep playing around with your numbers. And what number is it going to be? Two. Two. Let's try it. There we go. And now we are almost to enlightenment. Can, do you feel enlightened? Yeah. You're getting there? So what's this last one here? Can you read this out? Four loops can go backwards. Numbers equals countdown. For i equals five to one, step something. Now again, kids are probably going to have no idea, so hopefully by this time they're getting used to faking it. So if we try one, let's see what happens. Oh, I get, don't get anything at all. So let's think about this. This one, one, three, five, and we went by two. This one goes five, four, three, one. So what should we go by? Negative one. Let's try it. Oh, we've reached homework. You have to read this. Read this out. Yeah, you've reached enlightenment and completed all 20 questions. You are now one with your homework. So we hope you enjoyed the homework. Uh, we're just starting to do this concept, and we have it only in two recipes right now, this and houses, but we will be building out a lot more homework exercises. So we welcome any feedback that you have at teachingkidsprogramming.org. Thank you.